Uh, praise the Lord, brethren. Thank you for staying tuned. For, for those of you that have uh, made the effort, and uh, we appreciate your, your contribution, your support. But it is for the kingdom of God, it's for the work of the kingdom. It's not really for our, our, ourselves as individuals. We, we have nothing to, to gain, but waiting for the rewards that the Lord will come, is coming with to, to give unto us for doing, for working this vineyard, for um, con contributing to the growth and development of the brethren and that's what we are, are aiming and we are learning together obviously um, because we we know no, none of us can claim to know everything and uh, that's not um, realistic it's not it's not true only God knows everything so we will forever be learning because the Lord God our our God himself is is a, is a teacher so he teaches us the Holy Spirit carries on teaching us every time we go into his word there's something new that or we discover that we did not know about before the scripture that we've not read before amen so we need to have that that open mind amen, amen. and we're going to discuss the word of god and we've been uh studying and uh exploring the coming of the lord and we're going to continue uh with that subject again today and we trust the lord to guide us in uh, what we are planned and uh, are ready to to do amen Father, we thank you. Bless your holy name for your word. It is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light in our path. So we shall see clearly because the word brings illumination to us. Our eyes will be enlightened because we have desired your law. We have appreciated the weight that it brings in terms of quality, in terms of um, illumination, in terms of growth and development. That we may understand the things that have been freely given unto us and understand the manifestation of your promises to realize the time that, and the season that we are in and the dispensation that we are in because you have called us into this kingdom that we may know and have that knowledge and build confidence upon that knowledge because in knowing you lord we have received eternal life because the word that the lord jesus christ your very begotten son came with from you father that he gave unto us that word has led us into your presence and has been has ensured that we are committed to you therefore we can call you father as well mm -hmm. even as the holy spirit your very spirit your very presence has made us into kings and priests today mm -hmm. and has birthed us anew that now we know you personally and individually and we have that relationship with you that we can call you father and our mm -hmm. spirit cries out unto you abba and we long and yearn to see you face to face and one day soon we shall realize because your promise your promises are yea and amen thank you for engraving your name upon us lord jesus thank you for baptizing us into christ through his holy spirit thank you for making us be born again for giving birth unto us therefore we are born of the spirit we give you praise and give you glory we pray that your word will be spoken with authority and power to deliver that which you plan to be delivered today that your name will be glorified lord jesus that life results prosperity may be realized even as your word comes forth let it be out to us lord through the mouth of your servant even as all of us are your servants without distinction therefore when we work we must rely on you says holy spirit because without you we can do nothing therefore we humbly bow ourselves before you in adoration and recognize that you are Lord. We give you praise and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, the last time we concluded on the forthcoming, and uh, we mentioned that the forthcoming is about Armageddon. The Lord Jesus comes back. This time he enters the, the earth's atmosphere with the intention to land on the ground and that is an element of distinction when we compare the the fourth coming with the previous coming obviously today we're going to touch on the fifth coming and we're going to get to that as the the, the holy spirit leads us so during the fourth coming the lord jesus christ returns with the saints of god we the believers so how does he come back on the, the fourth time is riding on a horse a white horse is leading at the front we are behind him also riding on our white horses 
is coming fully prepared, geared up, you know, ready uh, for war. He has his armor on him, the sword sticking out of his mouth, the double-edged sword. His eyes are fi fiery, like flame. He is wearing many crowns. So he's showing the authority that he has, his kingship, his power and dominion. He's wearing a white robe. On that white robe, there is an, 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 uh, an inscription that reads, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And the same inscription is on his thigh as well. But there is a name on his forehead, which only him knows the meaning of. Very, very important. So, he lands on earth at Armageddon where he fights his enemies and kills them with the sword of his mouth he tramples them under feet he crushes them like grapes in a wine press there is blood splattering everywhere and his robe is drenched thoroughly stained with the blood of his enemies so he masterfully gets rid of them in that war. He suffers no casualty. There is not so much of a scratch on him because his enemies can't get near him. It is a fair fight though because once you decide to contend with the Lord God he comes at you with all his might. You can't say that you're too powerful um, you know, put some of your weapons on the side, make it a fair fight. No, you you pick a fight with God, he'll fight you as he would fight anyone who will decide to be an enemy of his. Because if you're challenging the Lord God, you're saying that you are you are unequal. So you can't say that he should, you know, lay some of his weapons aside. To give you a chance but the bible tells us that even the weakness of god is stronger than the strength of man so there's no no one has any chance at all you know picking a fight with the lord god is the most insane idea ever and it shows his enemies just who he is in that battle of armageddon amen and we had covered the events that will happen before that battle and this is what the Holy Spirit really emphasized on, on to us to in preparing this study that it is more logical it will be um, easier to, to to consume when we look at the events that precede each coming because if you're to talk about the coming of the Lord most people tend to focus on the second coming and the term that as the only coming that exists but the Bible doesn't give us that indication when you go through the scriptures, which we've been able to do because the Holy Spirit has guided us, and we discover that the Lord comes back on these occasions, as we have mentioned. It's only been once when he came in the flesh the first time. So the end times or the last days are marked after the, the ascension. So the moment the Lord Jesus goes back to heaven, we're already in the last days because we're expecting his return. So the second coming has not happened yet. And we know how it's going to come the second time. It does not land on earth. It stays up in the air, on the cloud. And the saints join him up there. Those that will be ready. And those that are asleep in Christ will be resurrected. And all of us together will be transformed and be taken up to meet the Lord in the sky. And we will be going to heaven. That is a reality that we are eagerly waiting to experience. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And it will happen whether you believe it or you don't. It does not change the promises of God. It does not change the word of God. But you are better off believing in the word of God because his word is forever settled in heaven. So 
there's no changing to what the Lord has said. Is what goes forth out of his mouth to accomplish the purpose for which he sends it and comes back with a report of the accomplishment of that purpose. So once he leaves the lips of the mouth, as the, the, the phrase goes, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, it must have an impact, must have an effect. That's the word of God. The word that speaks, says the Lord, they are spirit and life. Amen. So we'll carry on now with the with the fifth coming and look at the, some of the events that will happen before the fifth coming. But because we are using the fifth coming as the the last one of the comings, there are other uh, coming we could we could say the sixth coming or seventh coming. But that time, this earth will have been in existence anymore. It will be a new earth. So everything is new, so we can't call those successive comings because the old earth that we are in will be destroyed. The Lord will make a new earth, a new heaven. So as, 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 as far as this earth is concerned, the amount of time the Lord, the Lord God comes back on this planet is only five times. That he actually sets foot on the ground. It's only once or twice because in the fifth coming he will be also you know, setting foot on the ground. But for a different purpose, as we shall, we shall see later. Yeah. So the last event that we covered in the forthcoming, we marked, we, we termed that uh, the sub point E because we had point A, B, C, D in the forthcoming, uh, marking the, the different events that precede, uh, precede that coming. So we talked about the fact that Satan would have been arrested and held in custody at the end of the battle of Armageddon and will be thrown into the bottomless pit where will be chained and a sealed place on him not to deceive the world again for a thousand years meaning after a thousand years he will be allowed to deceive the world again meaning he will be allowed to come out of the bottomless pit again and do whatever he has to do or is allowed to do, which feed into God's plan anyway. Amen. Amen. So this is a scripture that we, we read last uh, in Revelation 20 verse 1 to 6. When the Bible tells us, uh, uh, John uh, recounting, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should, not de he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Right, so, the first event before the fifth coming, before we get there, what is the fifth coming all about? Yeah. The Lord coming back the fifth time yeah, is to do with judgment. Yeah. Well, we'll see the different phases in judgment, it times time allows us to get to that just today, if not, as uh, we always trust the Lord to come back next time to continue where we would have left off. So those is coming back the fifth time to perform his judgment. Okay. So the judgment is going to be performed on four areas. Okay. There is judgment to be performed on the church. Okay. There is judgment to be performed on the Antichrist, the false prophets and Satan. Okay. And there is judgment to be performed on the system of the world. Okay? So we're going to be doing the view back, backwards and forward here. Okay? But this is a good thing, the fact that we've already covered uh, the forthcoming the Armageddon and we talked about the Antichrist. So uh, we'll be able to, to make connections when we mention this again, okay? in a different context, in the context of judgment. Okay? Right, so how does the Lord come back the fifth time? 
This is what the Bible shows us. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 13, the scripture reads, this is Daniel speaking in his vision. I was watching in the light, in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, of man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. That is the Lord Jesus Christ there. It's incredible Daniel was given sight of this. How many thousand years before? No wonder the, the greeting that, that he receives every time was of, uh, um, would, would state that Daniel was a man greatly beloved. Would the Lord give you that revelation at that time about what's going to happen in the consummation of of, of, of the, the, the Messiah's accomplishment or the fulfillment of the, of the, of the Father's will is incredible. And this is what Daniel saw. So the Lord Jesus Christ is standing with a cloud of heaven after the thrones have been set and the Father is on the throne. That's for the fifth coming. So it's coming back down. This is not Armageddon anymore. But we need to make, give some sort of a, a concession as to what would have happened between the end of our Armageddon and and uh, there's another event, another war that will be fought. And what happens prior to the Lord Jesus coming back. So if he's coming back here, that means he must have gone back to heaven. And we have a theory to propose why we would have gone back to heaven as well. Yeah. Because after the battle, uh, after the, he has been in the, in the battle, yeah. he has accomplished it with the Father. This is uh, something that has been established. Whenever the word is sent forth, and Christ Jesus is the word of God, personified, he is the word. That's why he reports back to the Father, because the, Lord, the, 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 the word of God tells us that the word that goes forth from the mouth of God does not return back to him void. It, it, does all, it means it does always return to him. The emphasis on the void it means that it always accomplishes, because the word tells us after that, the speech tells us after that, but it accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent. It does not mean about the void without accomplishing the purpose for which it was sent. So the Lord Jesus who gave back a report when he came first time, the first coming, in John 17, we read how it was reporting back to the Father concerning all that the Father had given him to do. How he did not lose a single soul that the Father committed to him. And he gathered all of us, prayed for us, and handed us over to the Father. Untouched, un, you know, unharmed fully saved. So that is the pattern that we have. That the word always goes back to the Father to report. Goes back to give account of what has happened, what has been done. And the Lord Jesus would have done the same. Because he came on earth at Armageddon, fought that war. Then there was another war after a thousand years. And we'll see that particular war. And after that, he must report back before the final um, um, judgment. Okay, so this is how he comes back on his own. Amen. So the purpose of the coming is to obtain a favorable summary judgment. For the saints. Because he's our high priest. He's our bishop. He's our apostle. He's our advocate. He defends our case. 
as a body and as an individual. So the kingdom that he has earned, yeah, is earned it for us. As the Messiah, as the Son of God, he had to do that. Acting on our behalf, our propitiation. But he all, all, always had his glory. He always had his kingship. This was not a new kingship because he didn't have one before. He was earning this on our behalf. That's why he's able to make us kings and priests. Because he earned those titles. He earned those positions for us by pleasing the Father. So what we could have done, we were unable to do because we were not accepted by the Father because of our sinful nature. There was nothing we could do to please God. We didn't know how to please Him. We didn't know Him at, at all. We're all going astray like sheep. Everyone doing whatever they, 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 their, their heart they, you know, taught them to do. We did not have His law engraved on, on, on the tablets of our hearts. We had a heart of stone. We could not respond to Him. We could not hear Him. We could not see Him. We were blind. We were dead in trespasses. We had fallen short of his glory. So there was nothing good in us that was desirable. The Lord God. But because of his mercy, because of his grace, and his love that is boundless, that he sent his only begotten son. So he is the one who has earned the kingdom for us. That's why we are able to reign with him. Amen. So, what happens before the fourth, the fifth coming? Yeah? The events that happen before the fifth coming are A, imprisonment of Satan and the judgment of the Antichrist and false prophets. So, this is another uh, a backwards that we are taking because we've covered this before. It is an event that happened before the fifth coming because it's the last event uh, of the of Armageddon when the beast who is the Antichrist, the, the, the bearer of the name coded in 666, and the false prophet, the beast from the uh, bottomless pit, the same bottomless pit where Satan was going to be sent into uh, to be imprisoned for a thousand years yeah, because there was space available there. Yeah. Yeah. So that beast from the bottomless pit or from the earth it was the false prophet acting or, or carrying out the bidding of the, the sea beast, the Antichrist. So the Lord arrests both of them and places them as a finality in his judgment to spend time forever in the lake of fire, which is classed as second death. Anybody that goes in the lake of fire experiences second death. The second death has no return. It is damnation, permanent damnation that is. The Lord God has forgotten all about you. That's it. 